Good evening everyone, big welcome back to another episode of House and Home, where you can find just about all your lifestyle and household needs. I'm Marco and Eugenia stepping in for Teresa tonight. Well viewers, I hope you all had a great long weekend and had some amazing Easter celebration. Or for some of you, perhaps it was just like a great vacation just being at home relaxing. But for those who are working, compensation should be in order for you. Anyway, last week we touched on the Easter's edition and with Brian Bell featuring their Easter's offerings and Plas Belong Yumi showing you how to make simple indoor curtain designs that goes with the Easter theme. So yes, that was last week. Now to tonight's lineup and in no particular order, we have more editions of Animal Plas, Healthy Living with Mila, Brian Bell, Plas Belong Yumi and Cooking with House and Home. Beginning the night, we have the ever-reliable Brian Bell with Jane Tokilala and co-hosted by Teresa Miria featuring the Sunbeam Iron Cleaner. So check it out. Hello, Trisha. Hi, viewers. I'm Jane Takilala, and welcome to Brain Bell. Hi, Jane. Well, obviously, you have been showing us a lot of great products from Brain Bell. So, what do you have in store for us tonight? Well, tonight I will feature the importance of using an iron cleaner, which is suitable for all steam irons. Most people tend to ignore simple things in life that we think it's not important for now, like the regular care of your iron. By using the iron cleaner, it basically prolongs the life of your iron and saves your clothes from those ugly stains. Super hot temperatures can cause buildup of a brown substance which transfers from the iron to your clothing. In addition, minerals present in tap water may clog the steam holes. The iron cleaner will remove these deposits to prolong the life of your iron. To clean your iron, Step 1. Before use, shake the bottle well and add 6 capfuls of cleaner to 1 cup of cold water or 190 ml of water. Step 2. Set the temperature dial on your iron to steam and the steam dry dial to dry. Step 3. Empty any remaining water from your iron and pour the mixture into the iron. Step 4. Support the iron in a horizontal position over a non-plastic waste container. Plug the iron in and allow to heat for about 3 minutes. Step 5. Then you switch the iron off and unplug. Turn the steam dry dial to steam. Step 6. Allow the liquid to drip from the steam holes for about half an hour or 30 minutes. To rinse. Step 1. Fill the iron tank with cold water. Step 2. Support the iron in an horizontal position over a non-plastic waste container. Step 3. Set the temperature dial to minimum. Plug the iron in and allow to heat. And finally, step 4. Allow water to drip from the steam holes. Repeat as necessary until all traces of the blue solution has disappeared. So for those of you who own a steam iron and do not make an attempt to clean your iron, make sure you pick up a bottle of iron cleaner and prolong the life of your iron. And the best thing about shopping at Brian Bell is that we have complimentary products under the same roof, such as a wide range of steam irons. To suit any lifestyle to take you through those loads of laundry, removes wrinkles and gives you a smoother look. An added benefit is that all our irons are under six months warranty. We have assorted ironing boards of different sizes to make your ironing job easier and a variety of ironing board covers of assorted designs to protect your ironing board. The hot specials for this week will include this Integrity 2.2 litre rice cooker. It was priced at 97 kina, now you can walk away with it for only 70 kina.
Now this is a must have. This sharp 20 liter microwave oven was priced at 525 kina, now reduced to 378 kina. Make sure you benefit from this great offer, which is valid for this week only. Teresa, did you know that today marks World Health Day? Oh yes, Jane, I've heard a little about it, but what is the real significance behind this special event? It's basically a reminder about food safety, uh, which is an opportunity to alert the government, business houses, and us, the general public, of the importance of food safety and the part each of us can play in ensuring that the food on our plate is safe to eat. While we're on that topic, and as you know, Brian Bell covers a wide selection of food covers and airtight containers that promotes food safety. So make sure you drop by your nearest Brian Bell Home Centre and play your part in ensuring food safety for your family. Now you know you can turn to us simply because you're backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, happy shopping. Good night. Thank you Jane and Teresa for that and viewers if you do want to know more about the Sunbeam Iron Cleaner or would like to make a purchase order, please do head down to your nearest Brian Bell Centre to inquire. Time for our first break but don't go anywhere because we'll be back for more. Cooking with House and Home will have you see either Godwin, Teresa or I cooking out fantastic easy to make recipe dishes. And a week ago from last week you got the chance to see Godwin Eke cook up a delicious chicken schnitzel with side veggies. Well for tonight the talented Godwin will give you another of his delightful treats. Here's Godwin Eke cooking up the marinated chicken skewers with asparagus. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to Cooking with House and Home. I'm Godwin Eki and tonight I will be cooking chicken skewers marinated with honey and soy sauce. So tonight we have some marinated chicken skewers with honey and soy sauce. We have some plain chicken skewers and to go with the skewers tonight we have some asparagus. Before we start cooking I just want to say a special thank you to Nature Park for giving us the cooking location. Alright to start with we have a frying pan which is already set and ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is add some oil cooking oil that is that's just about three to two tablespoons of cooking oil so after pouring the oil into the frying pan give it two minutes and then once it's hot then you can start putting in your chicken skewers Now this is a very simple dish, so you can head down to the supermarket, buy some chicken pieces, uh, cut them into little pieces and then get your skewer sticks and then you can just uh, make chicken skewers. With the marinating of the chicken tonight, I had some soy sauce and some honey, so you can actually mix uh, both ingredients together and then put your chicken skewers, uh, mix it, and then you can put it back into the fridge. If you're making a barbecue, you can actually do this in the night before you go to bed and then in the morning it should be ready for uh, you to cook the chicken skewers. So I'm just going to check the skewers now after I've put the skewers into the hot frying pan. So just make sure you check the chicken skewers every few seconds, you don't want to burn the chicken. Alright viewers, so our chicken skewers are ready. So now what I'm going to do is start cooking the asparagus to go with the chicken skewers. So I'm just going to cut this in an angle. Mm -hmm. 
Once you cut this, then you can put it in the frying pan. So that's going to take about five minutes at least. To give the asparagus a bit of taste, I'm going to add some salt. And some pepper. So after you add the salt and pepper, you just want to keep turning the asparagus so the, um, the flavor is all around the asparagus. All right, so our asparagus is ready, so I'm going to start plating it now. All right, viewers, and there you have your chicken skewers marinated with honey and soy sauce and some asparagus. Join House and Home next time for more great cooking. Before we go, a very special thank you to Nature Park for the cooking location. From the House and Home team, see you next time. Wow, that really looks delicious, Godwin. Thank you for that. And viewers, if you want to grab yourself this recipe, go on to our Facebook page and it will be there waiting for you. Animal Plus is coming up after these short messages, so stay tuned. We care about improving lifestyles. Talk about the better man for your life with house and home. your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better plan for your life with house home oh, 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 oh. well for animal plus tonight Teresa Miria will be taking us to see the cold-blooded carnivorous yet endangered species that lurk at the nature park I am talking about Papua New Guinea's own apex predator, the seawater crocodile, or Pukpuk Bilong Solwara. She is joined by none other than the talented wildlife specialist Ishumu Bebe, who will talk more about this endangered predator. So check it out. Hi and welcome to Animal Plus. I am so glad you could join me and I believe you have been enjoying this fantastic adventure on continuously getting to know the different types of animal species here in Papua New Guinea, especially the ones that are kept here at the Port Mosby Nature Park for safe breeding and for educational purposes. Well, for now, we'll be looking at one of the most aggressive and dangerous predators known as the saltwater crocodile. Let's go find out. The saltwater crocodile is the Earth's largest living crocodilian. It is the largest of all living reptiles as well as the largest terrestrial and riparian predator in the world. It has a wide snout compared to most crocodiles. However, it has a longer muzzle than the mugger crocodile. Its length is twice its width at the base. The saltwater crocodile has fewer armor plates on its neck than other crocodilians. On this species, a pair of ridges runs from the eyes along the center of the snot. The scales are oval in shape and the scutes are small compared to other species. The head is very large. The teeth are also long with the largest teeth, the fourth tooth from the front on the lower jaw, having been measured to 9 cm in length. If detached from the body, the head of a very large male crocodile can reportedly weigh over 200 kg. The saltwater crocodiles are pale yellow in color with black stripes and spots on their bodies and tails. This coloration lasts for several years until the crocodiles mature into adults. Their tails are gray with dark bands. 
Due to their size and distribution, saltwater crocodiles are the most dangerous extant crocodilian to humans. This creature here eats just about anything, and I mean anything that comes its way is turned into its meal. I wonder what it eats in the wild compared to its diet here in captive. Let's take a look. This creature is a very formidable and hyper-carnivorous ambush predator capable of taking almost any animal that enters its territory, including fish, birds, reptiles, mammals, including other predators. These creatures have the broadest range of prey species of any modern crocodilian. The larger the animal grows, the greater the variety of its diet, although relatively small prey are taken throughout its lifetime. Large mud crabs are mostly consumed, especially in mangrove habitats, and applies to most of the ground-dwelling birds such as emu and different kinds of water birds are also commonly preyed upon. Here at the nature park, it feeds on cold raw chicken. Mr. Bebe, you have been so helpful and I really, really do appreciate your exceptional knowledge of just about every animal that is kept here at the park. And I still can't wait to know and learn more about this saltwater crocodile especially. So first of all, where was this creature captured? Trisha, this uh, creature, the saltwater crocodile, was captured up in Brown River. Basically, this creature is a saltwater crocodile, but it also can stay in a fresh water. Uh, it was captured by the locals up in Brown River and was brought down to us. How was it actually caught and how long have you been keeping it here at the park? Uh, this saltwater crocodile was quite young when the villagers caught it up at uh, Brown River. They actually, what they did was that they set up a trap and then they caught this uh, saltwater crocodile. Uh, it's been here for almost seven years now in a, at the Port Mosby Nature Park because for um, education purposes. So it's a freshwater crocodile, but a uh, saltwater crocodile, but it, it can adapt to fresh water. Great. Lastly, how many times do you feed it in a day? Basically, crocodiles, they come under the group of uh, this family group of animals called reptiles. They basically are ectotherms, meaning that uh, the surrounding, so the, the body temperature is determined by the surrounding, so external sources. Uh, that is why they are, be, they are being fed once a week. Uh, the right time for feeding this crocodile is when it's sunny during the afternoons, around 2, 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That is when this saltwater crocodile is being fed by the animal keepers. Well, my friends, it's time I leave you here, but please don't forget to join us next time to learn more about the native wildlife. Yes, do join us next time on Animal Plus. It's bye for now. Thank you, Teresa and Ishumu, for the wonderful insight into this endangered species in Papua New Guinea. Although this animal is an apex predator, it still has a purpose in nature, so let us try to help keep them here for many years to come. Let's go for another quick breather. We'll be back shortly. It's all about the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better about the better man for your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better man for your life with house home hello viewers i'm mark guanajina and welcome to this edition of plus belong you me We are here at the New Life Skills Training Center located 20 to 30 minutes outside of Port Mosby. It is run by the City Mission Organization. 
City Mission has been in Papua New Guinea for many years and it has helped many rural and urban communities in Papua New Guinea. So what better way to begin Plus Belong Yumi than to go into the history of City Mission and to know more about its accomplishment. So let's go find out. And to help us know more about City Mission, we have City Mission's own CEO, Reverend Ronald J. Brown here. Thank you for being on the show, Reverend. So Reverend Brown, can you give us a brief history of City Mission's establishments and the goals and objectives that City Mission has? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, City Mission began a little over 21 years ago as a dream that was birthed in the heart of a, of a banker by the name of Larry George. And uh, when he saw the, the plight of young men on the street and uh, that were involved in you know, not good activities and, and seemed like they were in a place of great disadvantage. And so he decided to try to do something about that. So he quit the bank and it, over the course of a number of years, he launched City Mission, like I said, a little over 21 years ago. It began in Koki, uh, at a Koki uh, building that has since been renovated a couple different times, and um, uh, where it started off with a handful of boys and within a few months grew to 100 boys living, living in our Koki building, um, which is, is our headquarters today. Um, from there, he, he came up and, and they purchased this farm that we're on now and was a place for the boys to come and be part of a, not just a boys shelter, but began to, to really do real rehabilitation. We are, uh, we are a Christian organization. We are non-denominational, but we are a Christian-based organization. And so one of the key aspects of what we do is, is to go after the, the boys' spiritual life. If it doesn't occur in their heart, it probably won't be something that is lasting. So we, we focus there. And so it began with an operation at Koki and then grew to this 45 acre farm out, uh, outside of 11 miles outside or 12 miles, whatever, outside of, of uh, uh, Moresby. Um, from that, uh, and, and that program developing over the course of time to a program that basically uh, works with about 165 boys up here in a little over a year long program of everything from beginning with some spiritual uh, input into their lives to see their lives changed by the power of God and then from there to literacy and vocational training, life skills, work ethic, all of those kinds of things. So in a nutshell that's kind of what we began with and then that, that began to grow. Um, and then about 11 years ago, we opened a facility for women and children who have been victims of gender-based violence at what we call House Ruth. And a lot of people recognize or are aware of House Ruth, but not aware of the fact that it's, it's part of City Mission. And uh, where we work with about 30 women and children uh, there that come in uh, off the streets that have been victims of, of some kind of violence or abuse. And our program there is a rehabilitation program that includes counseling and, and uh, legal, legal advice. And um, uh, we have a number of, of legal specialists that work with us pro bono, uh, medical help for the women and children that are there. So um, that, was, that was a little over 11 years ago. Uh, about eight years ago, we launched off to Lay and we began another program there, uh, similar to what we have here where we have boys that again come off the streets of Lay with similar problems. Uh, we have a plantation at 11 Mile in Lay where we have about 145 boys in residence there at any one, uh, one period of time. And those boys are going through the, an identical program as they do here. Um, at the end of the day for the boys, both Moresby and Lay, we're hoping to be able to get them uh, as, they, as they graduate from our program to go out and to get good jobs um, um, settle into a completely different lifestyle than what they had when they came in. And we've got a lot of great stories to tell about those that would take a long time of, of boys that have become very successful in different businesses around the community and gone on to do great things. And so, uh, which we're grateful to what the Lord is doing in their lives uh, for that. And we, you know, and uh, the opportunity that we've had to be with them and work with them. Um, in Lay, uh, in addition to the boys program, uh, we, uh, we launched a, a children's program in Lay that was originally specifically for children 
who, whose parents may have fallen victim to HIV AIDS. Um, we currently have almost 30 children there in that program that we work with from the ages of about four years old all the way to about 12. And so um, uh, we've kind of, our, our programs have been, in Moresby we've worked more with women who have been victims of violence and, and as well as boys and in Lay we've worked with children as well as the boys off the street. And what we're trying to do in the future, and I, I think we're going to talk, get a chance to talk about that a little bit, is, is be able to have those kinds of activities in both locations so that they appear, they're a mere um, type of ministry. So kind of in a nutshell, that's where we are today. Um, 21 years, uh, very grateful to business partnerships. Uh, originally our patron was uh, Sir Brian Bell, and uh, we, um, we owe him and the organization, uh, a great, um, great gratitude for what they've done over the years. Um, Newcrest Mining, others that I was, the, the list would be way too long to, to them. And, and I know I'm missing people, so uh, I don't want to make anybody mad. But there's been a lot of people that have that have been part of this um, this ministry for a long, long time, and uh, we're grateful for all those partnerships in both Lay and in Moresby. And most recently for some government part, the government help in the last year. So we're grateful for that and uh, for the Australian government and their involvement with us and the European Union. So um, uh, City Mission has been on a, on a journey and um, we're looking forward to some great, great days ahead too. It's all about the better man for your life with house and hope. So Reverend Brown, what does the new Life Skills Training Center does for Papua New Guinean boys? Well, uh, just exactly what the name says. We want to give them an opportunity at a new life, uh, and a changed life. Uh, when the boys come in, in our intake process and interview process, um, almost without um, out exception, the boys come in and we ask them, why do you want to be at City Mission? And, and because they want their lives to change. And so the name fits with what we try to do. The boys come in here and like I said, we, you know, we, um, we have a church here. They go to devotions and, and different things throughout the course of the week. Um, uh, we try to impact them spiritually, give them an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm, I'm, I'm CEO, but first and foremost, I'm a pastor. And so that's a high priority for me. And, um, but um, then, uh, within the first week they get tested literacy tested and uh, get placed into a literacy class they go through at least nine months of literacy training if need be um, towards a uh, culminating with a professional skills class where they get taught how to do CVs and interview and those kinds of things um, budgeting a little bit of IT um, so they progress through a literacy program most of the boys Many of them, many, many of them come in with very little education. And so we understand how critical it is to get, get some English in them. We are also a FOD recognized center. So we do FOD, we administrate FOD uh, classes here, and proctor exams and those kinds of things. Um, the boys come in, they spend the first few months working in the garden. Um, we are a working farm. Uh, they grow, we grow all our own food, or most of our own food, our, our vegetables. and. Uh, and produce. Uh, we also uh, we have a livestock department where we have chickens and pigs and wallabies and rabbits. Right now I think there's more than 1,200 chickens that we're in some process of, of, the, of growth and I think 31 pigs here. Um, but we have a working farm so the boys get engaged in that and they learn how to organic farm um, and 
and as they kind of advance through phases, we have four phases in the program, they do other activities on the farm, um, at least in the first three. Uh, they may be involved in livestock after they get out of the garden, livestock or security or maintenance or the kitchen, or we have a coffee shop here in Marigetta that we run to teach them small business operation, um, customer service, uh, hospitality skills. Everything we do is teaching, every aspect. They may be out in the garden weeding or watering, but we're, we see it as an opportunity to, to teach and instruct. In the phase three, they go through a workshop vocational training uh, for three months. Uh, basically, it just scratches the surface of, basically of, uh, of mainly trade skills, electrical, plumbing, carpentry, block laying, those kinds of things. Basically, to with it with the anticipation not necessarily to produce um, a highly skilled workers in those areas, but to get them a taste for something that they might like and enjoy. Um, from that, they they go into three months worth of casual work back out into the community, and we help them get jobs. And then at the end of that, we help them get permanent employee, employment out in the community. We also have a scholarship program, so that that's mainly targeted again towards trade skills. Um, and this is sim what I'm talking about here for Moresby is the same thing that we do in Lake. And that scholarship program um, has uh, been, we've been blessed by people that have got involved with that where we can take, them, uh, take a young man who has maybe developed an interest in plumbing and we can send them to a trade, sc trade school to get them certified in that area or electrical or, or carpentry or auto mechanics or those kinds of things. So, uh, so that it's just more or less we whet their appetite and, and give them hope for something that they thought was probably impossible, living on the street. Uh, to sum up what we do, it's to try to give an opportunity for hope, um, a new life, um, that things can change. And, uh, so with the, you know, both with the women's and children's program as well as the boys' program. They, and it's exciting for us to, you know, as management, to see the light come on in these boys, where all of a sudden they think, this is possible. I could do this. I could become an electrician, or I could become an auto mechanic, you know, or I, I mean, I've had, I've had boys come to my house at times over the, over the last years that have said, do you think it's possible that I could become a doctor? And I, and I thought, yeah, that's possible. It's a real, you know, you're gonna have to work really, really, really hard. Or, or I had one, one come up, I've had a couple come up and say, I wanna be a pilot. Well, that is possible. Air New Guinea has programs that they can take them from working on the line to eventually pilot training school. So, but, some things that they would have never dreamed of, ever. And so that's when, that's what excites all of us. It certainly excites my wife and I to see that light come on in them and say, okay, I can do this, this is possible. Now, Reverend Brown, can I ask you one final question? Can you please highlight some of the main accomplishments that are the pinnacle of the City Mission's distinguishedness? I, I think that, you know, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Um, we, we come in and we work, with, we work with one life at a time. And when I see a young man that I might bump into on the street that has got a great job someplace and, and guys and, 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 and doing great things and, and with, with goals and aspirations for a future, that does more for me than anything else and like I said those kinds of stories are are just there's just all sorts of them out there I, I think that in terms of what is um, kind of a um, a bit of a landmark for City Mission is that there are a lot of NGOs and that that come and go in in, in the in the country and um, uh, it's it's a difficult thing uh, being, you know, being able to sustain uh, a, a program or an activity or a ministry that there is no income that comes in directly from any of our clients. So the over 400 clients that we may have in our operations, not one of them pays one toy to 
be part of what we do in their lives. So, so I, I look at it and I look at 21 years and say, we're still here. And we have built incredible um, partnerships that have allowed us to still be here. And so I'm, I'm grateful for that. We're a homegrown NGO um, ministry in this country. Um, you know, we have had, we've had to do it on, you know, I, I, what used to be our slogan is that we did everything on the smell of an oily rag. And, um, uh, and we have. And in, in, in it, to some extent, that's how we have, we have operated. But but it's just been amazing. I also certainly in in our the the life of City Mission that I don't want to discount what what God has done. I mean, this has just been an amazing. I mean, I've only been part of this for three the last three years, um, but um, I've been in, in numerous activities around the world and. and four or five different countries. And uh, I was ready to retire um, from my last assignment for the Four Square Denomination in New Zealand. I was ready to retire. And uh, this thing captured my wife's and my heart. Uh, we're not young people, and we probably shouldn't be thinking about retirement. And we are at, at some point in the future. But it just captured our hearts in terms of the potential, and, and let alone the, the a current impact that is being made on so many, many lives. Thank you so much, Reverend Ronald J. Brown, for being on the show and sharing with us the history and accomplishments of City Mission. Viewers, it is truly remarkable what City Mission does, especially for the poor, unfortunate, and left out citizens of this nation. If you want to know more about the New Life Skills Training Center, then head down to Bautama, where the center is located, 20 to 30 minutes out of Port Mosby, for all of you living here in Palm. Or if you're looking at making a generous donation, find out where you can do it on their website, and that's www.citymission.org.pg. Healthy Living with Miller is coming up after this break, so don't go anywhere. Last week and the week before that, you saw Miller and Kamona perform the lower and upper body stretches, which is done at the nature park. Well, tonight you get to see them do the first part of the basic functional exercises, which are done again at the nature park. So have a look, make sure to take down the procedures that they will perform. Enjoy. Today we are going to do and show you guys a functional exercise. Functional exercise is a functional movement that our body is doing every day. Like sitting, pushing, pulling, reaching, and twisting. Okay, the first thing that Kamuna and I, by the way, I want to introduce one of my trainers, Kamuna Voy, who is going to show us how functional exercise is. Kamuna, you don't mind to uh, stay and face that front, please, in front of the chair. Now, Kamuna is going to sit down. This is what we do every day. Kamuna, please sit down on the chair, please. Perfect, can you see that? One more Kamuna, please. I am going to point it out what you have used first. Have a look, Kamuna will do it slowly. Kamuna, do it slowly to sit down, please. Can you see, it's his hip first. Before his trunk, 
and likewise the same time as he is bending his knees. Now, I will ask him Muna to get up again. And this time, I am going to remove the chair. We will let Kamuna to do I, to sit down. And this is what we are trying to go into squatting. Kamu, can you sit please without the chair? That's it, okay? Because without the chair, Kamuna thinks that he is going to be in danger. And that's the reason why he is using his pelvic and his knees to be on his comfort zone. Now, Kamuna, can you stand please, okay? Now, we are going to correct Kamuna, Kamuna's movement by going into a proper squatting. Okay, now Kamuna, can you do that again for me, please? Sit. Now, we're going, the first thing that we're going to do is to let Kamuna push his pelvic right towards the back. And then the second thing is Kamuna to chest out. Beautiful. And can you see it? From the tailbone up to his neck, it is straight. It is a perfect form. Okay, and then I will let Kamuna to move his knees slightly back. And that is what you call, Kamuna, I want you to put your hands on your legs, please. This is what you call squatting. Okay, from learning, doing sitting, functional movement, to squatting. Do it again, Kamuna. Perfect, beautiful. This is how you squat. Okay, now, Kamuna will do another squatting and I'm going to show you guys, down Kamuna, for squat. What squatting will do to you is to strengthen your buttocks, strengthen your quads, strengthen your hamstring, which is the back of your leg. And likewise, if you engage your core, it also strengthens it. Thank you, Kamuna, and stand up. Now that we have showed you what squatting is all about, we are going to modify that squatting by letting Kamuna pick up a, a, a luggage or a bag. Look at how Kamuna do the picking up, okay? The first thing that Kamuna is going to hurt himself is his lower body. The, we're going to show you guys how is the proper way of picking up things. Now, Kamuna, I want you to bring this um, front, le front knee flex and likewise your back knee with a flex toes. Okay, and Kamuna is going to let his back straight and also his hip in. Now, Kamuna is going to use to pick up the bag by using his buttock and his legs, not his lower body. And come up Kamuna by maintaining back straight. Did you see that, viewers? Tell the viewers, have a look at this. And you see the sequence there? He used his legs and his butt. It's not coming from the lower back by bending his upper back, okay? So back is straight, use your hip, use your legs. Well viewers, I hope you got some amazing tips from that first part of basic functional exercises with Mila. Second part will be airing next week, so stay tuned for that. On behalf of the House and Home team and Mila, of course, we would like to thank the management of the Nature Park for allowing us to film there. Thank you. Viewers, sadly we have come to the end of the show. I know you all enjoyed it and took down some important message made mention during the show. By the way, for all of you wonderful mothers out there and perhaps you generous guys, please, if you can, give some of your cooking recipes. We would sure like to cook it up during the Cooking with House and Home program. And we shall acknowledge your effort there. 
Or if you'd like to give suggestions or add ideas, do email us at houseandhome at mtv.com.pg or go to our House and Home Facebook page and post there. After all, it's you viewers that we are trying to please. So that's it. Thank you so much once again for being on the show. And on behalf of the House and Home team, we would like to wish you a blessed and prosperous week. I am Marco Energinia. Have a good night. You love